scandals can no longer be ignored. Tonight, we will demand answers from all of the people directly involved. And that means it's time for Hillary Clinton and, yes, President Obama to come clean about colluding with the Russians and explain why in anybody's vast thinking they could ever give Vladimir Putin 20 percent of America's uranium supply. Also, Hillary Clinton, her top campaign officials, high-ranking DNC executives, all conveniently playing dumb when it comes to the phony, salacious dossier. We'll cover that in tonight's breaking news opening monologue. All right, before we get into all of the new information, and there's a ton of it tonight, I want to remind you that for over a year, Democrats, members of the biased, abusively biased press, all breathlessly talking about Russia, Trump, collusion, hysteria breaking out almost every night. They were acting like the worst scandal in American history. Meanwhile, there were so many prominent Democrats and former Obama officials. In spite of all of this, they were saying there's smoke, but there's no fire. For a year, no evidence, but there's thousands of hours of television coverage. We knew by listening to people it was never true. What's this? Have you seen anything that suggests any collusion between the Russians and the Trump campaign? Well, there's an awful lot of smoke there, let's put it that way. People that might have said they were involved, to what extent they were involved, to what extent the president might have known about these people or whatever. There's nothing there from that standpoint that we have seen directly linking uh, our president to any of that. The last time we spoke, Senator, I asked you if you had actually seen evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. And you said to me, and I'm quoting you now, you said, not at this time. Has anything changed since... Uh, we spoke last. Well, not e no, it hasn't. I know we need to go soon, but just yes. to be clear, we haven't. There has been no actual evidence yet. No, it has not been. Okay. I just no, it has not. At the time I left, I did not have, see any smoking gun certitude evidence of collusion. Is there any evidence of collusion that you have seen yet? Is there? There is a lot of smoke. We have no smoking gun at this point. See that? And despite the destroy Trump media and their desperate attempt with no evidence, they did not stop breathlessly, hysterically reporting these lies, the so-called Trump-Russia collusion. Watch them. We have a president's campaign under criminal investigation for dealing with a foreign adversary. Historian Douglas Brinkley says there's a smell of treason in the air. You told the Washington Post last week that, quote, there's a smell of treason in the air when it comes to this investigation. A lot of people are afraid to use the T word um, treason, but in the end, that's what people are investigating. The Republican Party is now actively shielding this treasonous megalomaniac. He knows that he is smack in the middle of this investigation having to do with perhaps treasonous activities. Now, tonight, one of the most important things, sadly, we conclude is that the media and the Democrats in this country and their attacks were purely, purely political. They never wanted the truth. Now, we even have real evidence that the FBI uncovered a Russian plot that involved, we have real evidence, bribery, extortion, blackmail, money laundering, racketeering. They knew in 2009, that was one year before Hillary Clinton and the Obama administration approved this corrupt Uranium One deal. And what we've learned this week is that the FBI, the Department of Justice, all knew in 2009 that this was happening inside our country and they did nothing to stop it. So the same Democrats, the same media outlets that were screaming bloody murder for a year, lying to you every day for a year about Donald Trump, are giving next to zero coverage to this story. Now keep in mind, we have an FBI informant in this case who infiltrated this Putin network right here in America. He has evidence, he has emails, he has personal recordings, he has documents, he has insider knowledge of all this, that America's national national security was in fact compromised at the highest level. Our country was sold out right in front of our faces. They let it happen. Then of course you have the explosive new details about the phony, fake, salacious news dossier. Now we now know that the Clinton campaign, the DNC, paid over nine million dollars to help fund these lies, this propaganda hit piece that the Russian government sources gave them. Now, make no mistake, this was nothing short of a collaborative effort with the Russians to manipulate the outcome of the last presidential election, and we have the proof. 
Also, we have to point something out since everyone is so worried about Russia collusion. Isn't it interesting that at no point did any Democrats, my overpaid liberal media friends, or Robert Mueller, or members of his team, none of them, they want to get to the truth, none of them asked the one man on this earth that knows the truth, that would know the truth. And I'm talking about the WikiLeaks founder, that's Julian Assange. He is the person, the one individual, that posted the information about the DNC emails. No one ever took the time to do what we did and talk to Julian Assange. I've talked to him now on air five times. Now, because they knew what his answer would be and they didn't like it. He was telling us again and again, it was never Russia, it was never a state, that it was never a state party. Now, all these scandals and the ensuing cover-ups add to what I am telling you now is the biggest betrayal of you, the American people, that I can think of in my lifetime. The American people have now been regularly lied to. You have been misinformed. You have been propagandized by a political party and abusively biased liberal media that have literally no interest in helping the people in this country or telling you the truth. To them, Everything obviously is about politics and about advancing their rigid, radical, left-wing ideology. Now, with all that said, here's all the new information we have tonight. On the fake news dossier, Hillary Clinton has been completely silent. So far, Clinton has yet to say anything publicly about financing a document that used current and former Russian government sources to create the most obscene, salacious, completely fabricated accusations about Donald Trump. Now, since Hillary Clinton is refusing to talk about her role in the dossier, well, we decided to reach out to Clinton's spokesperson for comment. Big surprise. They referred us to other people, including the law firm that the Clinton campaign used to fund Fusion GPS. In a statement we did get from them, it said in part, quote, Hillary for America and the DNC complied with all campaign finance laws. Well, that's informative. Now, Hillary's silence on this is beyond telling. Now, sources have told the New York Times that Hillary Clinton only learned about the dossier when BuzzFeed published it back in January. Really? Hillary has such a great track record of telling the truth. Now, the current DNC chairman, he's running as far away as he can and claiming he knew nothing about it. And disgraced former DNC chairwoman, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, she's saying she had no idea what was going on. And according to a report, Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, told Congress that he wasn't aware of any of these payments. Nobody knows nothing. How is it possible then that over $9 million went out the door and people in charge had no idea that that money was being spent? But meanwhile, so many Democrats regurgitated the lies, just like the media. Now, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan announced today that the FBI will cooperate with a House document request about this dossier. This is a huge development, and we're going to be following that closely. Also tonight, Fox News has learned that congressional hearings with the FBI informant, who is the key witness in this Russian bribery scheme, will also be with the chairman and ranking members of the committees only. And Fox News is also told that Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Senator Chuck Grassley, he rightly is pushing for public hearings with the FBI informant. Now we have to remember that in each of these scandals, laws were broken. Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett has put together a list for us. Take a look at the side of the screen. These are all the laws that were potentially broken by the Clinton campaign and the DNC in the fake news dossier scandal. And there's the Uranium One scandal. Oh, Greg Jarrett back at work. You have federal statutes involving crimes like bribery, mail fraud, wire fraud, racketeering, beyond serious stuff. This is go to jail type of things. Now, we also forgot about the Clinton email server scandal. By the way, they're now up on the side of your screen. Two House committees finally this week are looking into how the FBI and the Department of Justice during the Obama administration handled these issues and for good reason. James Comey let Hillary Clinton off the hook despite the overwhelming amount of evidence of wrongdoing. So with all this new information, the big question tonight is who knew what and when? 
with Uranium One, the FBI had mountains of evidence of Russian bribery. Did President Obama know about this? Was it in President Obama's daily presidential briefings? Apparently, that might have been told to the lawyer of the FBI informant. And what did Hillary Clinton know? And when did she know? Did she know that her husband, Bill Clinton, was being paid double his speaking fees for a speech in Moscow? Did she know that Bill asked for permission while in Moscow to meet with Russian nuclear officials? Did she know that eventually Bill met with Putin during the trip and advocated? This is important. He also advocated that, in fact, the Uranium One deal be done and also was paid by a bank that had a financial interest in Uranium One. So how could both of them, Obama and Clinton, ever think ever it's a good idea to give 20 percent of America's uranium to Vladimir Putin? Now, by the way, that's the foundational material for nuclear weapons. We need to hear from key Obama administration officials. For example, like Eric Holder. What did he know and when did he know it? He was in charge of the DOJ. They were in charge of the FBI. Did he know about the evidence of Putin's network right here inside the United States? Settled. All the crimes being committed in 2009 before it, this Uranium One deal was approved in 2010. Now, remember, Eric Holder, Hillary Clinton, they were part of the committee that signed signed off on this deal personally. Eric Holder did. Hillary did. And there's Robert Mueller. He was the FBI director back in 2009. How inconceivable is it that he didn't know that Russian operatives were in our country trying to break into the uranium market on behalf of Vladimir? Now, how can he possibly oversee any investigation into any Russian collusion? Next, we got Rod Rosenstein. He was in charge of the investigation into this Russian bribery plot. How does, does he not have a conflict of interest? Then we have to ask James Comey, what did he know and why didn't he act? And there's also questions about the phony dossier. How is it possible these same people didn't think it was necessary to tell you, the American people, tell Congress that the Clinton camp and the DNC paid for it? You know what? We are working hard day and night. You deserve answers to every one of these questions. But one other important thing that we have to tell you about tonight before we bring in our guests. We now have proof that intelligence wasn't the only powerful government entity that was weaponized by the Obama administration. Now, you may remember, I talk about five forces against the president. One of them is the deep state. They weaponized the power of intelligence to use against this president. Just a few hours ago, the Department of Justice announced they reached a settlement with multiple Tea Party groups that were targeted specifically by the Obama IRS because of their political ideology. Now, the settlement includes payouts to several Tea Party groups and an official apology from the IRS, which now admits that their actions during the Obama years was, quote, wrong. You think so? Using the IRS targeting people that you don't like or agree with? Now, remember, much of this IRS weaponization occurred under the oversight of Lois Lerner, while many of these Tea Party groups were in the critical initial stages of forming a resistance to the policies of Obama. That stopped them dead in their tracks. And many of the Tea Party groups were prevented from organizing and instead were spending all their time, all their resources, all their money to combat what was persecution from a politically inspired IRS. In settlement, great but a day late and a dollar short, and Obama got a free ride in 2012 as a result. So ultimately, the Democrats got everything they wanted. The Tea Party became distracted, ultimately fractured, and President Obama was reelected for a second term in 2012. We have a lot more. We have so much new information tonight. Joining us now from the American Center for Law and Justice, and of course, one of the president's counsels, Jay Sekulow, and Fox News legal analyst, Greg Jarrett. I got so much for both of you. You, Jay, need to first take a victory lap because the yep. ACLJ, your group, where you're the chief counsel, you led this case from the IRS. They did weaponize the IRS. They did turn them against anybody that was conservative, Tea Party oriented. A big win, but Obama kind of yep. also got what he wanted. 
Yeah, well, I mean, look, it took three and a half years of litigation to get there. Our team did a fantastic job of litigating this, and the end result is not only an acknowledgement of the wrongdoing, but also a complete change of policies. Uh, there, there will be an order signed by the court in the next week or 10 days that's going to include declaratory relief, meaning that the policies will go forward and they will not be able to do what they did, which is violate the First Amendment. And, I, you know, whether you're right, left, or center, the idea that the government would target somebody because of the name of the organization or the political position they were espousing violates the fundamental aspects of freedom of speech, freedom of association, and we've now got an agreement with that. So it's a very good day for our clients. But, Sean, it was three and a half years. A lot of those groups, as you know, uh, were, were not able to continue to, to activate. And by the way, it wasn't just Tea Party groups. There were groups in that were, were uh, just because of the name that they had in their organization, they were targeted for this. And it really beyond the pale, but the end result was a good I mean, settlement. I, I it, remember it in April of 2010, I was in Atlanta. It was like 25,000 people there, people all over the country, massive crowds yeah. that were energized. These groups formed. They wanted to open Oppose Obama's policies, and they got stopped in their tracks. So this did, did have a big impact. We got a good, we got a, fit, we got a result. But you know, the harm was done. There's no question about it. I'm glad the case is over. Glad it's resolved. Glad the government uh, took the liability and the responsibility that they did for wrongdoing. But it took three and a half years of litigation to get there. Yeah. Glad we won. Glad it got resolved. Glad General Sessions, Attorney General Sessions, signed the, uh, is, it moved this forward. He issued a statement today. But uh, at the end of the day, three and a half years of litigation to do what? Defend a fundamental right on the First Amendment should have never happened in the first place. All right, Greg, let's start with uh, the laws. By the way, you're an amazing I love the fact that you're so organized as a lawyer. Sean, here are all the laws in this case. Sean, here, <laughs> you're a great partner to have on the Thank show. You. We appreciate it. Uh, laws potentially broken in the Uranium One deal. Let's put them up on the screen so our audience can understand it. Explain. Let's start there because this, right. this was, we sold out national this security. This is huge. The first six statutes on the screen are the anti-corruption pay-to-play statutes. You cannot use your public office, Secretary of State, to confer a benefit to a foreign government in exchange for money. The evidence appears to be there. And because she used her charity, allegedly, that would be racketeering, which, you know, the government goes after organized crime and the mafia for that. Okay. Now, uh, so all of these statutes, these are real crimes I keep saying sure. we can't have a two-tier justice system. We can't have one justice system for the Clintons that mishandled, destroyed, classified, top secret, special access program information, all of these issues involving the kickbacks, the paybacks, the right. pay to play. So the question is, how did we, how did they get away with it? And do you think they slide this time? The Clintons are escape artists that would make Houdini proud. <laughs> Whenever they are caught dangling their feet over the edge of illegality, they usually dummy up. Uh, Hillary Clinton, I'll give you an example, interviewed by the FBI, said 39 times, I cannot recall. It was so short because she could only recall her name and date of birth. You yeah. know, she pretends like she's dumber than a bucket of hair when it serves her purpose and the brightest person in the room when it helps her. Let's go to the dossier crimes and the scandal according to them. We'll put them, them up on the screen here. This dossier is getting to be a right. bigger, because they paid $9 million. Mm. Right. You can't pay millions of dollars to foreign nationals because that's against the federal election laws you can see there. And you can't can't hide it by falling, filing false or misleading reports. Now, I've been hearing Democrats say, oh, those are just civil penalties. They are not. The government produces a book. It's 319 pages outlining the federal election laws and all those who have been criminally prosecuted and ended up in prison. And quickly, the laws potentially broken in the email scandal, which now, thankfully, is they finally this week, they're yeah. back to this. The Espionage Act, two counts which were tortured and twisted by James Comey. And then the other two is removing classified materials from a government building. The final one there, destroying 33,000 documents. That's called obstruction. Yeah. yeah if I, and, if and they, they were subpoenaed documents. Right. Yeah. By Congress. All right, Jay, let me go back to you. Uh, yep. When you look at Uranium One, you look at the yep. Russian dossier. Here's my question and where my mind goes on this. So the dossier they, they have the former MI6 guy, he's right. uh, Fusion GPS, he's paying Russians for phony information. 
Right. And then I've got to wonder, was that the information? Because Sarah Carter and John Solomon reported that there were FISA warrants, another warrant. I'm wondering, wow, could they have used phony Russia propaganda well, to get... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. If, if in fact, the dossier was the basis upon which a FISA warrant was issued, you're talking about a whole host of legal issues that Greg will have to do another chart because uh, you're talking about going to a court, which is a FISA court, is a court, and, and getting a warrant to basically eavesdrop, tap, listen in on conversations based on a document that was not only unverified, as James Comey said, by the way, and uh, salacious and unverified, his own words, but ask this question. Why was the FBI considering paying for it at some point in this process? So that question has to be asked. And I, I go back to this, this whole concept, which is something we've been talking about for a long time, and that is, if this dossier was a, a political creature, which we now know it is, no question about it, it was, a, it was well, they call it opposition research. But if, if Christopher Steele was utilizing Russian assets to get this information, and then, of course, it's been, as, as James Comey said, unverified, and they went to court to get FISA warrants, you're raising a whole host of civil liberty issues, and who knows what they did and what they said to that court. inadmissible in a court of law. Well, I'd, I'd file motions to suppress the subpoenas that have been issued and the documents that were uh, wow. resulted as, as that. I would file those motions. I can name names tonight, the people that are happy. Real quick. We're... The FBI has become this all-powerful, renegade, deep state agency. They covered up the dossier information. They covered up the Uranium One information. Now That includes they're... Mueller? And that includes oh, Rosenstein? Yeah. And, and that includes Comey? Right. And Andrew Weissman. All four are on this Trump Russia investigation, and they are so compromised here that they need to start answering questions before right. Congress. We thank you both. Mm -hmm. We're only getting started. So much more coming up. Stay with us. If there was anyone that was colluding with the Russians to influence the election, look no further than the Clintons, look no further than the DNC. This is hypocrisy at its highest level. And I think it may be a new low in American politics. Everything that the Clinton campaign and the DNC were falsely accusing this president of doing over the past year, they were actually doing themselves, it turns out. And I think that this is a major scandal for the Democrats. Everything they were accusing the White House of, they were guilty of on steroids and human growth hormone. That was White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders criticizing the Democrats over their own collusion with Russia on a massive scale during the 2016 presidential election. Here now, The Hill's John Solomon from Circa News, Sarah Carter, also the attorney that is now representing this all-important FBI informant, Victoria Tunsing, is with us. Before we get everyone's reaction, we did reach out to the American lobbying firm APCO Worldwide, mentioned in Sarah's reporting. This was last Thursday. They provided us with the following statement statement, quote, the assertions in the piece published in Circa are false and unfounded. Our work, which was publicly disclosed seven years ago, helped continue a Bush-era initiative to strengthen our domestic nuclear energy industry. It had nothing to do with the Clintons. Sarah, I want to get your response to that first. Yeah, and I, I actually prepared a response to that, and I want to read it to you, Sean. I emphasize that APCO Worldwide Inc.'s position that there was no relation between their lobbying and consulting efforts for the Russian nuclear company. That's what they stated in our story, and we kept to that. And their in-kind work for the Clinton Global Initiative. I also stated their position that their work was unrelated to the acquisition of Uranium One, which is what they claimed by their parent company and their client. I just laid out the fact. I stand by the integrity of the story, and I will continue to follow the developments wherever they lead. That's my job. Stating the facts, and wherever those lead, we will go. All right. Victoria, you're now representing the client that knew FBI. How many years was he involved in and looking into this effort by Putin and Russia to infiltrate the uranium market in America? In America? From 2009 until 2014, when they finally indicted the uh, two individuals. And in 2009, he had, according to reports of John and Sarah, he had documents, emails, his own personal experience, and even recorded conversations. Is that true? 
Yes, the FBI recorded conversations, and he has records of those, but they took them back. In fact, I want to tell you that my latest request uh, to some congressional committees today was to ask them to send a letter of preservation to the FBI for all the evidence that they accumulated in these cases. It's a typical legal maneuver that you do. Uh, I shouldn't call it a maneuver. It's a typical uh, legal uh, request that you make. When you alert somebody that they may be an adversarial party, you say, you can keep all of the evidence because uh, if you destroy it, it's obstruction. Wow. Um, how soon do you think we will be hearing from this all-important client of yours? That's, that's a really good question because people need to understand the process. Uh, right now, he is putting together, organizing all of his documents. It's going to take him a couple of weeks. And then I will meet with him and we will prepare and we will be very organized in how we can make a presentation. Then we will meet with committee staff, maybe some members, but certainly it will be low key and it will not be in the public. There will be no click lights. It will be mm -hmm. just a, sort of an introduction to between my client and the congressional committee to see what there is. And, jo and, and John, let me go to your reporting and Sarah's reporting. Sure. He will, will, he will present evidence that he knew in 2009 of bribery, of kickbacks, of extortion, of money laundering, racketeering. If you knew that in 2009, we go back to the fundamental question. I think it would be dumb under any circumstances to give Vladimir Putin uh, a hostile actor and, and a bad guy 20% of our uranium. But knowing all of this, how could anybody logically make that decision? It doesn't make sense on paper. No matter well, money-wise, it doesn't make sense. Well, uh, there are four decisions that ultimately occurred in the Obama administration from the time the informant found the criminal wrongdoing and when the uh, Justice Department finally brought the charges in uh, 2014. Four very important lucrative decisions for the Russian nuclear industry. The first we know about is Uranium One has been written about a lot. The second one was uh, the establishment of a commercial agreement. It was a U.S.-Russia civil nuclear cooperation agreement. It really opened the door to a lot more business and a lot more dialogue between the United States. United States and Russia. The third was uh, approval of a deal uh, involving the United States Enrichment Court, opening the door for them to do direct business with um, uh, Rosatom, the big, a big country, uh, a big uh, nuclear company. All these things are going on, and you know, on the face of them, they might seem fine to people unless you know the company involved in it is engaged in this wrongdoing. That's the part that is uh, of such great concern to Congress. Nobody knew there was wrongdoing going on while these decisions were being made. And, and Sarah, with your reporting too. What what did we learn? This was designed by Vladimir Putin. He had, he had agents within this country working all of this, using all this illegal activity to get what John is describing. Yes, he wanted to penetrate the American market. Not only was he searching for a global place in the you know, marketplace, but he specifically wanted to penetrate the American market. And that's what he did. And I think as Victoria, through her client, will begin to unravel possibly some of these threads, uh, we'll see a lot more. It wasn't just in 2009 when the client began to work undercover, but it's previous to 2009 that the FBI had gathered enough evidence to show that it was happening even before 2009. This was a long, well thought, methodical plan by Vladimir Putin to penetrate the U.S. market. And I think as the information continues to develop, we'll unravel those pieces of those threads for the American public. And Victoria, can I, I know you have to protect your client. I don't want you to step outside and I know you wouldn't anyway. Um, was he aghast? knowing what he knows that all of this was going down in spite of all that he knew was happening? Well, he was furious. He was furious when the CFIUS decision was made to sell to the Russian companies the 20% of our uh, uranium. And uh, he asked the people that he was, you know, the FBI person, well, what's going on? Why are they doing this? And um, the... And, and, he got which, with an NDA. and I'll tell you what he says at another time. Can you give me a hint? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the FBI time? person was just as frustrated as my client. No, he said politics. Wow, powerful. He said politics. That's, that's a powerful statement. Uh, John, what can we expect next? 
You know, there's going to be a lot of activity that has to go on in the, these congressional investigations. We remember during the email scandal, the destruction of evidence. Remember the blackberries being smashed with hammers, things being erased. I think these committees are going to want to put out uh, uh, subpoenas or requests for documents or preservation orders to make sure that things in the dossier case, in the uh, FBI case, don't get destroyed, get misplaced, get lost. And then you, uh, people have to prepare. They have to find out what did the FBI know, what did the State Department know, what did the Commerce Department know, so they can start to build this moment where this uh, great informant is going to come forward and begin to talk about what he witnessed undercover. All right, you guys have all been amazing in so many ways and have worked so hard. Sarah, so we're so very grateful. John, thankful. Victoria, always good to see you. And we look forward to these coming days and weeks. When we come back, the man who broke the story, Peter Schweitzer and Sebastian Gorka and Laura Ingram. By the way, we want you to go to my Twitter page right now, at Sean Hannity. We want to hear from you. Does Hillary Clinton need to come clean? Do you think people are going to go to jail over this? At Sean Hannity, Twitter. And Laura Ingram, Sebastian Gorka, and Peter Schweitzer next. Don't you think it was, would have been important for the Congress to know back in January when we were per, first briefed on this Trump dossier that it was actually paid for by the opposition party? So the people that made the Russians successful are the Democrats and the people who have continued this nonsense over and over and over again looking for Russians behind every tree. The chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Devin Nunes, giving his thoughts on the fake news anti-Trump dossier that was funded by the Clinton campaign and the DNC. Only one of those scandals now surrounding the entire Democratic Party, Hillary Clinton, the media, the other being, of course, the Uranium One deal involving allegations now of bribery and corruption and kickbacks and all sorts of other things. Joining us now, well, he was the first person who exposed the Uranium One issue, the author of the number one New York Times bestseller, Clinton Cash. He's also the president of the Government Accountability Institute, Peter Schweitzer. It's, is it worse than what you knew at the time in as much as how the government actually knew about all of these crimes committed by Putin operatives inside the country? Did you know that part uh, it of it? It is. Yes, it is, Sean. Uh, although I'll say it's very interesting to see what uh, this uh, witness is going to tell us about bribery, because it's worth recalling that Uranium One, this company, started in 2005, and it started when the Clintons helped this Canadian billionaire acquire uranium assets in Kazakhstan. Bill Clinton went over there. He sweet-talked the dictator Nazarbayev. What was Hillary Clinton's role? Well, we actually have testimony in the form of a deposition from the guy running the Kazakh uranium program at the time, Mukhtar Zhakashev, and he says that the Kazakh Prime Minister went to the U.S. Senate, wanted to meet with Hillary Clinton, who was on the Senate Armed Services Committee, and she refused to meet with him until the uranium concession was granted. Wow. So we already have this case of pressure, and then after Joustra got this uranium <laughs> concession, he gave $30 million to the Clinton Foundation. And is there any That's chance the that money came was washed through Latvia or some other place and, and, and it was actually Russia paying the Clinton Foundation? Because that's where, well, if well, they, if they, we know there's money laundering. Yeah, that, that, that comes later. That's part of this, uh, the current scandal that I think the uh, eyewitness is wow. going to uh, testify to. But the point is, is that, that we already have testimony from foreign government officials that there was pressure. We know that as soon as Joustra got this uranium concession, he sent his first donation ever, $30 million to the Clinton Foundation, and it sort of took off from there. So when Hillary Clinton says in 2010, a couple of years later, uranium won this Russia deal, I didn't know anything about it. She was intimately involved with this company over the last five years. Wow. And we have testimony of foreign officials but, saying so. Let me bring in former deputy assistant to the uh, president, President Trump, Sebastian Gorka. I, I did mean to introduce you, and I just got ahead of myself, as I no often problem. do. I apologize. Dr. Gorka, I want to look big picture here. And I thought Sarah Sanders said this very well, and I take it a step further. Everything that they tried to say about Donald Trump and his campaign they are guilty of, but I'll add, on steroids and human growth hormone, that they yeah. sold out America's security in this case. Give me the big picture takeaway from this, because now the media has gone silent on Russia, virtually silent. 
Here's the big picture takeaway, Sean. For more than a year, the fake news industrial complex and the Democrats and Hillary and Podesta and Ben Rhodes have been slinging filth against the president and against his team. None of it has stuck. But in the last week, we have had an explosion of scandals that all are true and that all go back to the DNC and to Hillary. And the trouble is, Sean, you have to do a massive service because you're the only people. It's you, it's Sarah, it's Solomon, it's Peter. But that's it. And there's so many scandals. We have to separate them. Number one, there's the Uranium One deal. That's treasonous. Okay? We have to deal with that. Second, there's the dodgy dossier, which is about Russian disinformation being used to slander Donald Trump. And then thirdly, there's James Comey using that disinformation to create a special prosecutor trigger that is used to investigate the pr president. And then lastly, the fourth story is Fusion GPS. How many stories are out there that are fake, that came from Moscow, and which were peddled by Fusion GPS into the left-wing media? So the, That's four scandals in one week, Sean. The, the, the Russians lied to impact the election. The yes. Russians infiltrated our national security and to corner the uranium market and they succeeded and they knew all the crimes that were committed. If, if this had happened in the 1950s, there would be people up on treason charges right now. The Rosenbergs, okay? This is equivalent to what the Rosenbergs did and those people got the chair. Think about it. Giving away nuclear capability to our enemies, that's what we're talking about. All right, last word, our friend Peter. Well, look, I think it's going to be amazingly important uh, for that information to be preserved by the FBI. I think this eyewitness needs to be protected. Uh, and I think we're going to see a lot more coming out on Clinton pay to play. And I think Greg Jarrett is right. There's major legal problems for the Clintons when it comes to violating federal law. I got to tell you, it is the most unbelievable. I, it's almost if it was a novel, I wouldn't believe it. It takes you that far. Um, selling out national security, them literally using Russian lies to impact the election, propagandizing the American people. You guys have been phenomenal. Good work. We're going to stay on it. Thank you both. We appreciate it. Laura Ingram, I thought she was supposed to have a show here at Fox. Where is she? Oh, she's joining us next. Straight ahead. All right, as we continue joining us now with reaction to all these scandals surrounding Hillary Clinton, the Democratic Party, including, yeah, Russian lies to impact an, el an election. The author of this book is amazing, billionaire at the barricades, and I assume maybe in, I think the year's 2020, she'll be the host of a brand new Fox News show, The Ingram <laughs> Angle, which, oh, Monday. wait a minute, you start Monday. Oh, Monday. Oh. Yeah, we're, well, we're, 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 get, we're hello, arranging the hello. pencils. We're, and I know you're number one on the New York bestseller list thing, and I know you're doing great. Here's the problem. We're waiting. When do we get the Ingram angle? <laughs> we're just getting, we're, we're doing the angle on the pencils in my office across the hall. So we're, we, we got you, the staplers. Just as soon as the stapler gets yeah, fixed, you're I'm coming on. you firing like, you know, pencil darts at my head. Exactly. I just, but I don't, as if I don't have enough enemies. Thank you very much. Uh, we're good. Uh, I just can't get over how they used Russian lies with Fusion GPS to influence the election and how everybody now has gone silent on Russia. Now that they know, and we've been saying this is going to boomerang back, never mind they knew Putin had infiltrated the country and everybody had knowledge of it. FBI had it, Eric Holder had it, the president probably had it, Obama in his presidential daily briefings. I cannot believe the degree of lying hypocrisy and frankly they put this country country in danger. When you think about it, Sean, going back to the 90s, I had like a flashback of all the dirty politicking and the dirty campaigning and the use of private investigators the Clintons uh, utilized back in the 90s. Remember the name Terry Lensner? He was a guy who was like going through people's garbage. And this is what this Secret is Police. What they, 
Yeah. yeah, this is what they do. This is what they've always done. And now they've taken it to an international intrigue degree with, in, involving the former Soviet Union. And when you have a Kremlin written uh, uh, dossier that is compiled by the Chris, Christopher Steele fellow, and he puts it all together, but all the dirty, lurid, uh, fake details are provided by Russia. The idea that the highest level of the Clinton campaign, and perhaps even Hillary herself, didn't know about its provenance, didn't know where it came from, that just, that just doesn't pass the straight face test. I mean, we, I guess we have to hear from Mrs. Clinton. I want, a, I want a real interview with her, not an interview with a favorable journalist, but she should come on and talk to a serious journalist about what Laura, she knew that's and never why this proceeded this way. Well, she's afraid. Yeah, well, of course, and, and she's compromised. I mean, she was lashing out at me and, uh, by name, Fox News Channel by name, just this week. What about this Uranium One? I want to get your take on Uranium One. Under I think no that, circumstances would no. any smart person ever give Vladimir 20% <laughs> of our, our, our uranium. Yeah. And then, and then you look at, they knew he had Russian operatives in the country and that that was, that was their goal to corner the market. And they had an informant inside telling them about everything they're doing, bribery, kickbacks, extortion, all this. How could this possibly happen? Well, I, it, all of that that you just said, Sean, and then add the fact that we have this Committee on Foreign Investments, the CFIUS board, which includes pretty much the entire cabinet of the Obama administration. Obviously, Hillary sits on it and the Department of Justice, Secretary of Secretary of State, they all sit on this committee. Now, you could poll, I'd bet 10 people you know, right across the street at Union Station, the train station in Washington, who don't know anything about politics. But if you ask them, okay, we, we could approve or disapprove of Russia getting 20% of our uranium that could be used for nuclear weapons, nuclear power. Do you think that's a good idea? Now, I bet 10 out of 10, maybe nine if you can consider a drunk guy on the street. Probably, well, probably, yeah, give it to yeah, well, probably no one of them is going to be liberal under, Joe Scarborough. So, you, yeah, get, you under, know, he doesn't have a brain. Under any circumstances. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, uh, but what you have here is they knew Vladimir Putin had infiltrated the country had spies in the country, was doing illegal activities in the country, and on top of them never being smart enough not to do whatever, but they all approved it anyway, and then the money comes back. I don't understand, like I can usually at least understand liberal logic. There's nothing here that makes any sense except that they sold out the country, a massive appeasement mentality, and that they're corrupt. Well, it's, it's, it's corrupt to the core. It's uh, per perhaps other financial interests that we don't know about. I think there's a lot that we just don't know. I think there are a lot of pieces to this puzzle, Sean, that we still don't know. We did not have a Justice Department that really wanted to be transparent in the way they handled uh, this, this case. This case that it has many different aspects to it. They didn't, want, they didn't want an informant to testify to Congress. There was no real congressional oversight of this deal. Again, on its face, it's ludicrous that we ever would have approved no. this, just on its face. But the fact that they're accusing Trump of collusion when all this was happening, that, that, that is what truly makes, I think, Amer Americans who are tuned no. into this really sick. Well, congrats on the book, Billionaires at the Barricades, uh, New York Times bestseller. Thank you. Uh, are you really showing up to work Monday or is this all one big joke? Because I've never seen weekend. anybody sign a contract and never show up to work. You maybe never show up at work. What is up maybe, with that? Maybe the week after. We're, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just doing a very zen approach to my Fox show. It's just, I have to breathing exercises you're, you're before I start. You're, you're like O'Reilly, but O'Reilly took off, and, but he had worked here 20 years. You're taking as many days off him. Well, that, what now is that up with is that? A, that is a low blow. I am not. I am. I am working hard across the hall on my desk. Okay, so we're going to really see you Monday. You promise. Monday, and are you going to pass? Are we going to pass like oh, a, I'm gonna pass. a drink through the? I'm going to say. The, oh, there's an empty chair. Way. She didn't that show way. up. Hannity has an hand, extra you hour. You got to hand me something. Kilmeade the... will fill in because Kilmeade's on every other hour of the day. So, all right, the Ingram Angle starts Monday. Billionaire at the Barricades, a brand new show. We hope you'll be watching. We'll continue. All right, after two years, special project. By the way, I wear my glasses. Uh, tomorrow is finally the day. I wore my glasses. Yes, it was an accident. Uh
that you get to see it. Award-winning film. I'm so proud of it. The executive producer of the movie is called Let There Be Light in theaters all across America. You can find viewing locations. I hope you'll go. You can take your whole family at Hannity.com or LetThereBeLightMovie.com. Take a look. Yeah, 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 I'm coming. You're drunk? Oh, you can't pull the wool over your eyes. The basic tenet of Christianity. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you dare tell me about the love and the compassion of your so-called God. What do you think it does to the boys to take the death of their brother and use it as part of your carnival act? Pays the bills. <laughs>